practice about the repressed memories and how we get to them. I want to be sure to stress this part about post-traumatic stress disorder, which makes us one of the diagnostic criterion is to is the is an overreaction, a hyperreaction to something other people feel is normal. That too, that clue, that reaction should tell you something about something bad that happened to you. That to, I don't. I just want to make sure that's kept in there as you become your own detective, or hopefully you have an ally, somebody who's already a trained detective. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Those are massive red flags, aren't they? Your your overreactivity to something that everyone else th thinks is fine. Or when I work with babies, and I have a specialty area in infant and early childhood abuse, both adult survivors who are abused that early, and also I worked with a lot of little ones who were were abused, and I take them around you know, with the parents' permission. I, some, you know, sometimes they can't walk, so I'm carrying them. I just take them around the office and, you know, outside the office a little bit or down the, you know, the parent can watch if they want, but I'm, I'm taking the child and I'm watching because the child can start screaming at any moment and, you know, they can't talk. You have to be a detective. They're telling you, you know, what, what happened to them, you know? Uh, they, they, or the parents who are the best advocates for a child who can't talk will come in and say they reacted to something. Right. You know, they dumped all the cereal on the floor. Well, w w did you ever leave her with the abuser uh, in the morning when somebody was eating cereal? Like you don't look at anything as being un possibly unrelated. If they say no, that's fine. Maybe they just had to dump something out like kids do. But it's, it, you, you do have to look. And in a way, we're all nonverbal. When it, become, Absolutely. when it comes to being abused. Yeah, so take, so people need to take- Because fight, right, fight, flight, freeze, or now they've added a fourth one, fawn. Yeah, yeah. Fawn, you know, be overly kind and overly sweet. Yeah. Hoping somebody won't abuse you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, with, with um, regard to signs and signals of abuse and so on, what about dreams? D dreams are fascinating to me. I had a book, child book on dreams that was put out. It was just a wonderful series of books on all kinds of problems children have. And it said, dreams are always about something that happened to you. Well, I believe that. I was just shocked anyone would put that in print. And about, especially about children, but it's true. And they, I remember the little uh, picture showed a child at the dentist and then a dream of somebody standing over them with something sharp and they're lying, you know, which is, uh, you know, so dreams always have their basis in something that happened to you. And you, know, you might be just covered with, with fantasy and bizarre things, but it's something that happened to you that's in that dream and usually can be found by a person who's good at asking you questions about dreams. Yeah. Okay, what, what, what was it like? You're never your own age in dreams. You're never your own age, you're always younger. Um, but asking questions about what went on and, and what's the first thing, again, asking the classic unconscious question, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of what it blank that was in your dream? Or, there was a person in my dream, this is one of my real dreams, there's a person in my dreams who couldn't walk. Who's the first person that comes to your mind when you couldn't talk, when you couldn't walk? And I, you know, I had an answer, boom, person who had had polio and couldn't walk. And how, how do you feel about it? The other thing in dreams is to watch for, as you begin to recover, there's in, there are always these dreams that are recovery dreams where the healer first appears. And the healer might be a doctor, a, a lawyer, a policeman, a teacher, uh, a, just a kind person who you know drives a truck, whatever. But the healer always appears, and they may not even be nice the first time they come in your dreams. They may actually be cruel because you're still not quite there yet. But over time, you'll have healers, people appear in your dream, people who help you who are kind. But I always am excited for the client when there is a healer that comes that says to me good you're making progress your unconscious is you know sometimes i'm talking to your unconscious sometimes i'm talking to you, you know? so 
dreams are, and dreams can contain trauma memories, without a doubt. You know, Freud um, walked, Freud said, the reason for all the neurosis in society, as he called it, all these people, it couldn't be true. He, it said, he said, it couldn't be true because there were too many of these women. It couldn't be that many women being sexually abused. He didn't have those words then. And secondly, he had a dream about his niece that, in which he was sexual, sexually attracted or sexual with her. And he was horrified. And he certainly couldn't have that issue. Right. And he wouldn't have known that because he had all his letters burned, but one person kept his letters. One person kept his letters about that, how, how he turned away from sexual abuse being the primary cause of neurosis to say it's your unconscious wish to sleep with your parent or have yeah. another have a, another genital genitalia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He just didn't have the courage. And he wouldn't be Freud. He would have been driven out. He wouldn't be Freud. And he knew that. Oh yeah, yeah. It would have cost him his career without right. a doubt, wouldn't it? Yep. Right. Uh, right.